Hey Sahil, welcome to Web Engage. Thank you so much for taking out your time and agreeing to do this. My name is Chirag. I lead the content marketing and special projects team here at Web Engage. Uh, for all the viewers who are viewing this for the first time, if you could just introduce yourself. Uh, what do you do currently? Uh, where do you come from? And what's your background like? Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sahil, and uh, just like uh, everyone, I from I'm I start from the scratch that. I never knew that where I want to be and what exactly I want to do. And it's like so much of confusion uh, in my life. I started off from the hotel industry and then uh, found it a little bit of like, you know, uh, a close yard. And then I switched to the marketing field. So I did my digital and then it's never the stop from that time. And uh, I, it's been a long time that I've worked with uh, many boutique agencies, startup companies, and then switching it over to the meta company. So the journey is uh, really good. And uh, what I have learned so far is that, uh, you know, what, what you observe, what you uh, wander around is just like, you know, you have to put all your experience in the current field, beat it marketing or anything. So I've learned that all my experience from my, like, you know, school, college or whatever or the work I have done in the past, everything I have implied uh, to this field because I know the worth of it. So yes. Nice. So your journey has been scattered around multiple places from agencies to now sitting in Meta, right? Um, and customer retention, when it comes to retention, I'm sure that was never your first career choice that yeah. came to your mind. You sort of para-dropped into that role. Uh, how did that happen? Like what got you interested into customer retention, customer engagement and, and why, uh, you know, did you choose to be in that industry in the first place? So basically, first I'll uh, tell you basic, uh, that uh, retention is initially there was nothing called as retention. So when you are, once you're working uh, anywhere, you have to uh, acquire the brand and then from acquiring the brand to make a uh, retention of that particular brand, it's all included right now. The importance of retention has leveled up in such a huge manner that people now realize that acquiring a client is good but having the retention of them is like you know it's, it's also, actually it's good and it's actually profitable, profitable. Yes, yes so uh, what it's just like a leaky bucket i mean like you know when you put uh, lots of money uh, in a bucket and with like you know on marketing advertising and just like if you don't uh, know the meaning how to re retain them so there is an importance like you know uh, increases of retention interesting you call it a leaky bucket i was just thinking of a very funny anecdote for web engage uh, we're sort of like the m seal of the acquisition world now <laughs> <laughs> you can you can uh, like you know make it any uh, kind of twist in that but yes of course i mean like you know see retention is particularly what exactly is like if you know the brand you know the client you know the value proposition what you he bought to you like and then if you're not able to retain them someone else on your behalf is able to retain them that will take a long time because they want to understand their business but if you know that brand why can't you retain to that particular uh, business exciting if you don't retain them somebody else somebody will. else will do that wow well, that's a powerful one uh, so obviously you know you spoke about retention your current experience with meta your previous experience with agencies uh, there was a lot of learning along the way. I'm pretty sure of that. What is that one thing that you learned very late in your career that if you knew earlier on would have changed the game for you altogether? So, like I said before in the starting that uh, I was a very confused guy. Like, you know, I don't know nothing what to do. Even today, I, I don't know what to do exactly. But yes, this is important that you don't know what to do. And then you, like, you know, apply all your skills, whatever you learned, whatever current field you are, which you are choosing to that. And that you know the things start happening by its own if you are just this just one game uh, implies over here is the focus game if you like you know focus on what I, what currently you are doing and apply all your skills in that there when things get start rolling your way then you understand okay i'm made for this thing this is this is your interesting so uh, if I was to summarize, start with a blank slate. Yeah. Focus on what you're doing Focus right now, you. and your path will keep coming to you. Keep coming to you. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So, having said that, right? Uh, with all these years of experience that you have, 
obviously you fail you face a lot of challenges today right be it through people through processes or even on a personal front right um me for example i find physical fitness my biggest roadblock to my success uh what is that one thing that you would want to change uh in the way you work today across these three parameters that would set you for the next 10 years to come okay well thanks uh, jirang that you have asked me this question so i want to answer in a way that it's very hard to convince everyone and you are not here to convince everyone each of us is not here to convince any other person it's just about convincing yourself apart from this motivational quotes and all but it's a actual fact that you know what if you uh, like go on the uh, data side of it and like there are lots of things like you know put pulling out the data uh, connecting that dots to your particular brand and everything and then making a deal out of it with your client so it is also important but i mean the major factor is in this uh, scenario is that you start with the uh, zero Mm-hmm. okay if you if you start with zero if you if there is a ballpark figure that any of your uh, uh, like superiors that gives to you 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 know the way that you have to reach over there and then you will start finding the ways out of it mm-hmm. and then there you go and like for me uh, particularly con- there is there is lots of uh, convincing to people convincing my uh, like you know client partners csms mm-hmm. it's a good thing but i mean like i first convince myself that whether i am convinced from this then they will be convinced from that it's just starts with you so self conviction is self-conviction. something that you should probably work towards yes. and once you are convinced about something it's it becomes easier to convince others definitely fair enough fair enough so with that said we come to the next segment of the session which is called never have i ever okay. So you can take this and I will ask you a bunch of questions you can choose to answer them or not answer them okay and if you choose to answer them do help me with some justification towards it okay all right um so my first question to you is never have i ever created a failed campaign and then blamed it on others i have oh nice finally that's that's a first by the way that's a that's a nice. that's a middle step of retention <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so what was it like talk me through it what happened so basically it's like uh, it's about uh, the client he's a surgeon mm-hmm. and uh, like there are lots of campaigns that you have created it's, it's just i won't call it fake but i'll call it a demo one mm-hmm. so the results definitely it matters when there is a live campaign but i showed him the case study for that this similar campaign because i've uh, I've, i've dealt with the the healthcare clients previously as well mm-hmm. so i told my client that this is the same results in a huge numbers you're going to get mm-hmm. when you have to like you know when you need to do your marketing and everything so he said can you create the same campaign now when i started that campaign he won the similar campaign i did for my previous client mm-hmm. when i created that campaign so there was a difference in numbers i mean like the leads the cost per leads and everything like you know is high extremely yeah. high and then uh, i twisted around and okay. then I, i won't go in the depth of it right now but yes of course i mean like it's it's important uh, not to fake it but yes uh, uh, create a vision in your client but and then the numbers that matters i mean like yeah upar niche it's 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 a part of it fair enough fair enough so come into the next one when back when you were using webbing age right um never have i ever sent a campaign with failed personalization tags no i've never you never done that no. wow that's another first as well so everybody everybody that i've spoken to has said that at least at some point in time we've sent the wrong name or the so- wrong product or we've or just missed the personalization altogether we've done that uh, yeah um, i have a reason for it like you know what there are lots of uh, brands that you work on i i truly understand mm-hmm. but that campaign is something i mean like you know which gives value to your uh, like your clients mm-hmm. and uh, so that i first said uh, in in the starting that focus is very important for me like even if i don't know what to say what to not but i when i'm sitting in front of my laptop and checking the data on my uh, uh, smartphone i have a eagle eye on the the, ah. the campaigns and the uh, the data and all of it so that eagle eye is important that won't distract you for things nice and nice. even if you having lots of lots of clients one thing is very important that uh, you should make a framework in your mind uh, like what exactly you have to proceed with and 
even if the time constraints i mean you have to check what exactly how much time priority you have to give to that mm-hmm. value of the client first that is important so i would say you know create a checklist in checklist mind in mind, and yes, then yes, follow that checklist, checklist diligently exactly nice right. nice so since you come from an agency background right i know the answer to this one <laughs> but never have i ever tweaked my reports to save my ass that too i i won't deny i have <laughs> i know i, I have, expected that i have to go home early and each time my manager pulls me over that i want the report i want that report and also it happens happens me. right uh, never have i ever sprayed a campaign to achieve my month end numbers Mm, I have. I can say I did it for one time, but yes, of course, I have. Nice, nice. Did it backfire in any? Ah, uh, no. I hide it. I'm like I changed the topic. <laughs> okay, okay. Fair enough. We'll also keep our mouths quiet. Ah, <laughs> uh, never have I ever picked a bone with my manager because he asked me to run a stupid campaign that did not make sense. Actually, I have, and I got fired for that. <laughs> wow. Interesting. I'd yeah. I'd love to know more what happened. Okay, so it was my initial uh, days when I just joined the uh, company, and uh, so you know when you work with any client from any sector, any industry, basically, so you have a bond with that client. That bond is like they trust you, mm-hmm. and even in every agency or like you know any any uh, marketing companies, they have people who can who they can trust who bought them results. So one of my client who got like was trusting me, and they want to target a very niche market. That was mm-hmm. a real estate client. They want to target a very niche market. Mm-hmm. So specif- specifically, what happened in that is that I was targeting the right audience, but my superior came in picture, and then they said they won't get good results from there, and uh, mm-hmm. there can be a difference uh, uh, in the campaign numbers and everything. Uh, we we make it broad, but I differentiated in the com uh, compare like in in the com uh, yeah. comparison of it, and I said that no, I want to go for the niche one, mm-hmm. and then he told he convinced me about it, and uh, I said it's okay. My willingness is that to uh, not to go with the broader one, instead the niche one, because that mm-hmm. is also the client expectations out of it. He said no, what do whatever I said. I said okay. okay, and then once we did that, and the campaign failed, and the client. uh got their hands off from that company mm-hmm. with them every blame came on me that why you oh, have okay. cannot okay. name my superior about it and then yeah i said it's okay with the client i'm also dealing but you know the good part of this is you were true to your client you were yeah. true to your work and no matter what the outcome you stood your ground right Definitely. and that's what matters and that's what shows your character and your diligence and your ethics towards Work in your client success. Kudos <laughs> to that. I believe man. it does. I mean, like you know, but yes, of course. I mean, like, it feels bad that uh, like you know certain things happen, but uh, yeah, you, as but you said, it's anything that bad. happens only makes you stronger. Right? Makes you stronger. Yeah. You're 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 working with Meta today. Like <laughs> everything is well in the past. Well in the past. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Worked worked out well in the past. Nice. So uh, with that, uh, Sahil, thank you so much for taking out your time and agreeing to do this. Um, I hope to see you soon, uh, and we'll do this in a a more offline way. We'll pop beers and we'll have a candid conversation around this. I would love. Uh, but for now, thank you so much. Uh, thank, thank you so much, much for taking thank our time. Thank you so time. much for have a nice day. Uh, taking your time for the interview. <laughs> thank you so much.